Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. everybody welcome to this special episode of all too real a two my name is michael e colin the second and with me as always is is the mighty matthew haas no that's that's too arrogant it's matthew haas mm-hmm. you're mighty okay that's cool like the mouse <laughs> in the house so the other day I talked to actor and future director Jeff Davis about his acting career and um, all the cool films and stuff he's been in and uh, some, some of his thoughts on life. Um, let's uh, take a listen to that now. Okay, I'd like to welcome uh, actor Jeff Davis to our All Too interview portion of the All Too Real 2 podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks. Yes. Um, first, uh, I'd just like to ask you to tell us a little bit about how you got uh, started in um, acting and entertainment and everything. Well, um, uh, it's kind of different than most, I think. I didn't uh, I didn't start out acting at a young age. Um, I think it might have always been inside me. I didn't realize it. But, um, I was in my, I think, mid-20s. And uh, a friend uh, mentioned uh, something about an acting class, and and uh, I thought, oh yeah, that sounds like fun. So I, I took this little acting class, and I did a play, and I kind of kind of got the got you know I liked it, enjoyed it, had a good time. But I'm from a small town in Maine, and you know no one really thinks about the big picture that much. So I kind of forgot about it. And um, a couple years later, uh, this young lady who was in my Act, it was in my acting class that I took was also in the play um, I saw her on TV and she had gone to New York and, and landed a role on a soap opera and I thought that's what I want to do and I think I was 27 or so and um, running my own business I, I sold off my business and spent the next six months planning my trip and uh, I just dove in head over heels I decided I was going to be an actor and I came to Los Angeles and I've been here ever since that's really cool. Um, what is your uh, like favorite memory so far from all of the uh, projects you've done? Um, I was looking through your IMDb, and it looks like you've done a lot. Yeah, I mean, I've been very lucky. Um, even some of the stuff that was early on that's not on my IMDb page. Um, you know, I, I, I first couple of years, I did some background and, and, and stand-in work, and I got to work with Kevin Costner on Waterworld and, and um, wow. a few things like that. But but what what I, I really enjoyed, I, I think I was early. I did an episode of Arliss. I don't know if you know the TV show Arliss. Yeah. Um, it was about a, about a, a, an agent, a talent agent, a sports agent. And um, 
one I did two episodes actually, but one of them I got to work with. Um, I was a baseball uh, like baseball park manager, and this elderly ex baseball player in the show who was one of his clients was coming to the park to sign autographs and do a show, and it was up to me to pay him. And I come walking in the room and I hand him the cash and he won't take it from me. He just looks at it, his his agent, you know, to Arliss. And I'm all excited, like, hey, Mr. So-and-so, you know. And uh, it was actually James Coburn. Oh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was one of his last projects. So I, I was really excited to, to have a chance to meet him and just, you know, talk to him a little bit. Um, probably one of the highlights of, of my career. Yeah, I used to watch that show uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, when it was on. Um... I mean, I'm 41, so I, I remember that show. Yeah, so it was. That, yeah. That, I mean, that was a good show. Um, it was. It was funny. It was. It was. It was funny. It launched some some good actors. Uh, um, and and uh, Sandra Oh was on there, who ended up going on to uh, Grey's Anatomy and, and, and some big movies. Yeah. Um, I uh, I yeah I remember watching that like really late at night. It was it wasn't it on like HBO or something or it was HBO. Yeah, yeah it was one of the early HBO series. Yeah. 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 Um, what um like who uh if anybody like inspired you to want to become an actor um you know i think just growing up in general i always i just liked um i i, I always just liked action movies and like rocky i i love the original rockies the first couple of them and i loved clint eastwood and, and his westerns and i i think my that would be my earliest inspiration but then you know what i, I one night I was, uh, it's a funny story. I was actually in a, in a nightclub back home where they had this little dating game thing. And <laughs> they asked me if I'd go up on stage and, and be one of the contestants. And I really wasn't into it, but I thought, okay, I'll just go have fun with it. So I kind of channeled my, my inner Robin Williams and I was doing <laughs> voices and acting silly and foolish. And, um, this was a couple of years before I actually made the move out here. And I think I, so I think Robin Williams was a big inspiration. I, I, and I thought that I was going to come out here and be the next, you know, Robin Williams. And the, the funny thing is, is I've done almost zero comedy since I got <laughs> here. Almost, uh, but that's what I actually originally thought I would end up doing. So, you know, things change. <laughs> Hi, folks. This is Michael E. Cullen II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? Well, I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Superstory podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it uh sometimes we have guests sometimes we don't um just depends on how we're feeling yeah and uh you know so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter then you should definitely check this out or i might get sad and when i get sad it gets pretty sad so yeah, i can't deal with him when he's sad yeah uh, no one can really so um yeah so, so check out a uh, super story podcast right here where you get this podcast super story podcast Step one, dramatic introduction. I am Magus Elgar. Magus that lore Elgar is one of the more respected casters in all of Hearth. The dragon bone plate in my skull probably needs its focus enchantment line. Though don't expect to go under his tutelage unscathed. Well, you know what they say. Pretension can turn intention into the best retention. Nobody says that. No, not really. You can hear Magus Elgar and his exciting adventures. Visit MagusElgar.com to download your copy today. Um... What uh, what's your uh, favorite uh film and um like who is a person that you would love to work with? Um, both of those like, you know, it goes back to what I just said before. Um, I, one of my favorite all time films was is Unforgiven. Oh uh, yeah, with, with Clint Eastwood, and I would love to work with Clint as a director or as a fellow actor. Either way, uh, just to share the share a pro, you know, just to be on set and be able to just. <laughs> Uh, you know, breathe the same air. <laughs> I think, I think, I think he's very talented and, uh, he, he became more and more talented as he got older. I mean, his acting and his directing is in his, in the, in the last 20 years in his, you know, seventies and eighties is just incredible. 
Indeed. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's funny you mentioned him because like, it seems like, uh, lately I've been interviewing different people and like almost everybody mentions, uh, Clint Eastwood for some reason. Well, I think in, in recent yeah. years, some of his movies, I mean, ever since million dollar baby, and, yeah. you know, he's just done some as a director, uh, a grand Torino, just, Oh, you I know, love that movie. <laughs> yeah, he's just it's just he's done some really some really good stuff in recent years. So even the younger generation, uh, you know, they they might not get so excited about him as an actor, but they've seen his movies, I think. Yeah. Hey folks, this is uh Michael E. Cullen the second, um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Two real and on that show what what do we do matt we we watch biopics and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not so we was a lot we, more exciting than that though yeah so, so 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 we we analyze the real story and the real story get it get it real. You know? yeah they're, they're spelled differently yeah. folks you can guess which one i said which way uh-huh. anyways um so uh sometimes we have guests sometimes we don't um but we uh talk about great sh- great uh great movies like uh shattered glass yes. and the social network and uh a futile and stupid gesture among others um those are some of the ones that we've covered so far and uh we're going to cover a lot more so uh please uh subscribe on stitcher um apple podcasts google podcasts wherever you uh find your great fun podcasts and be sure to share it with your friends do it do it do it and make sure you're not afraid to get all too too real bye-bye what advice would you give anybody who's uh, like interested in, be- in um, you know, becoming an actor or anything in the entertainment industry? Um, just know that it's not, um, it's not all glory. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to get in this business, whether it be lighting, camera, whatever, it's work and it's 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 networking. It's paying your dues, putting some time in. I mean, most most every person in the industry has worked for free more than one occasion uh, just to get experience, to make connections. And um, I, I always tell people if if you feel like there's something else you can do, do it because um, you've got to, it's got to be a passion. It, yeah. it can't be about wanting to be famous or wanting to be rich. I mean. Those, you know, are few and far between. But to be a working actor is it's got to be a passion or you might as well not be here. Um, I was looking through your uh, IMDb and I noticed that you were uh, on an episode of I uh, Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. The, yes, that was yeah. actually one of, one of my more recent. Yeah, I just episodes. saw that. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, I just watched that whole series the other day. I, I love Tim Robinson. He's he's hilarious. What was it like well, working I, with him? It was good. It was fun. It, it, uh, my, I did a really strange uh, skit on that show. It was a commercial, uh, fake like a mock commercial, about a a horse ride, a horse ranch who raises horses with small uh, penises. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a I was a husband and wife who were there. Like a, it's like you know riding the horses, and and she looks over and she said, it was uh, something about boy that horse has a big you know and i'm like i don't want to ride anymore let's go home (laughs) and then it cuts to the the owners talking about how they bred these horses with five inch penises and it cuts back to us at the end and she goes hmm is that what they mean by hung like a horse yours is bigger than that and i'm like is it thank you winston's It was a silly but fun sketch. So actually, a, a little touch of comedy there. So it yeah, was fun. that's cool. Yeah, because I, I know you're saying you wanted to get into comedy, but yeah, I think uh, I really think uh, Tim Robinson is one of the like unsung heroes of comedy lately. So I think a lot of people don't don't know who he is and don't realize that you know uh, he, a lot of the Saturday Night Live skits uh, I think came from his mind. Yeah, recently and. Uh, yeah, I was yeah, a, I was a fan of his show Detroiters. Pretty, yeah, very too. funny out, out there, out there, yeah. funny. Um, so uh, one uh, interesting question I'm I'm asking everybody I interview is uh, what is your guilty pleasure movie? Um, like something you are almost ashamed to admit that you love to watch. Oh, what is a guilty pleasure that I'm ashamed to say that I watch? Um, <laughs> hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. Let me think right up. That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Titanic, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, my wife and I seem to watch it. It's, it's on all the time. Oh, yeah. Know? We just seem to end up somehow gravitating towards it. I don't know how, but... Uh, I, yeah, I saw that I four that times did. in the theater, so I understand. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah um, so, uh, what, what do you got uh, coming up? Anything that you want to promote or anything to tell people about? Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I just I just finished uh, something called Ratchet. I don't know if you've heard of that yet. It's a Netflix show. It's hmm. uh, the story of um, Nurse Ratchet from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh wow. Uh, the same writers and producers. It's her backstory. It starts in 1940s, and I just did one episode, but I got to play a, a, a police captain in the 1940s, and uh, that's going to be a, a, a fun show. I'm not sure when it's when it's coming out. They're shooting now still. I just finished shooting that, and um, I just did a couple of films in Texas, uh, low, you know, independence. Uh, my first western, which was really exciting. I got to play. I got to play a, a an old a preacher in the, in the westerns in this western called Showdown on the Brazos, and a, that's going to be a fun little movie. Hopefully, that'll come out later this year or early next year. And um, I'm trying. I, I have in the works right now my own project, which is called The Demons Within, uh, which will be my, my directorial debut, and that's coming together. And I'm pretty excited about that. Hoping oh, wow. it, uh, hoping it comes to fruition by the end of the year. We we'll hopefully be shooting either late late this year early next year uh, i'll be shooting my first film as a director so that's exciting that's that's cool um yeah uh anyway anyways um thanks thanks for your time sorry it's so short but um we'll definitely have you back on sometime soon and uh talk more about your uh you know maybe do a more in-depth uh, interview when we have more time and uh talk about uh more of your uh, history in uh the film industry it sounds great, Mike. I appreciate yeah. having me on, and I look forward to, to talking to you again. All right. Thank you very much. You have a good night. Great. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. And we are back. Hope you guys enjoyed that uh, interview. I know I did. I did, too. I loved it. Did you love it? I No, I did. I loved it, yeah. If you loved it so much, you should marry it. Oh, I can't love an abstract um, thing. Oh, that's right. You know. I forget sometimes. But, um, yeah. I know you do. It's okay. I know. My name's Mike, by the way. I mean, I know I introduced myself at the beginning of the show, but yeah. I'm just letting people know that I know who I am. I know I'm, I'm secure in myself. I love myself. I love the listeners. Matt is laughing at me. <laughs> because we were supposed to make this serious. I know. And we can't do it, guys. I'm no. sorry. <laughs> so we're just going to keep riffing. Yes, um. we will. So anyways, I love myself. I hope you loved that interview. I love Matt. Mm-hmm. I love you. I love, I love Mike. Yes. And um, we love everything. Mm-hmm. Everything and everybody. Yes. And um, make sure that, you know, you do good things for each other. Mm. This world is a nice and happy place if we make it that way. Yeah. That's my advice for today. Um, so, so, Matt, um, what should people do that if they liked this and love us and love the episode? If they, yeah, if they... If, if they are all of those things, um, and they, they also want to make the world a better place, they could start doing by doing that. Yeah, they could start doing that by liking our podcast on social media. Yes. Slash sharing it mm-hmm. links to their friends and or followers, whether it be via Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, mm-hmm. Snapchat, if that's even still a thing. Um, there's some, bullshit called tiktok now apparently i'm sorry <laughs> does it mean it's completely it's tra- okay trash tic- and happier but, it's okay um, tiktok okay yeah if you like to sponsor us tiktok okay, anyway so um <laughs> anyways uh, <laughs> yeah or, or any any other you know kind of social media any yeah you know, any any internet based um if you want to put a thing you know or or if you want to put a bunch of letters together and just hand them to your mailman mm-hmm. and send them off to your friends that say hey listen to all too real too yeah the old-fashioned way yeah um, and also if, if you would, if you, we would very much appreciate if you would go to any of the normal places you go to listen to podcasts, whether it be Stitcher, uh, Apple, whatever, you know, just, you know, give us a five star rating or a thumbs up or any, any indication that you liked it because that will help our ratings and that will also help us get, um, listeners in the future. So you, mm-hmm. you, you won't be the special few anymore but 
your family will grow exponentially. So you can always be the uh, hipster that was the first one to listen to us. Yeah, you always have yeah. that. Yeah. So um, that's you know you don't can take that. Are hipsters still a thing? They probably yeah. They, they might have a different name by now. Yeah, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Post hipsterism. Yes, post hipsterism. <laughs> Anyways, um, so uh, you know, do that, and uh, you know, if you if and if you like us a lot, and you want to wear stuff that uh, you know, has our logo on it and other things, uh, you can um. Check out our T Public. There'll be a link to it in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, we got a uh, cool uh, T-shirts and bumper stickers and other fun things. Tote bags. I don't know. Yeah, you know all kinds of stuff. Maybe you know a uh, car with our logo on the side of. Wait, I don't, I don't think know about they, that. No, I don't think they sell those on no. there. No, no, they don't. No. We don't sell cars, people. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like miniature. Toy cars. I mean, you might be able to buy something on there that you could put on your car, like a bumper sticker. Yeah. And then you can drive around town and let people know that you're cool. Yeah. Or that you listen to us, one of the two. One of the two, yeah. Yeah. Or both. I mean, whatever. So, yeah. Hope everybody has a good evening, morning, afternoon. Or a timeless um, type of existence. If you're in some kind of dimension that time doesn't exist, you know, I hope you're enjoying listening to this. I hope they're enjoying their existence altogether because that would suck yeah. if they weren't in a timeless sort of realm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so hopefully this will bring a smile to their face. Yes. And uh, have a good one. Thanks for listening to All Too Bye-bye. Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.